Hi guys, this is Wave 618. So it's the 8th of March 2018, currently 25 past 7 in the evening GMT. All right, so looking at Bitcoin four hourly chart here. So we've had a, a very interesting uh, period in Bitcoin. Some really dramatic things have happened. Uh, a lot of people are clearly very indecisive about where Bitcoin is going right now. And that's understandably so. We're at a very pivotal point right now. Um, and what happens in the next day or two will determine the general direction of Bitcoin. So I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to give you my analysis. Um, I've left my lines on from yesterday just because, um, yeah, I'm not going to hide anything here. I'm going to stick to what I've been previously saying. So um, <clears throat> you've got my WXY um, pattern here. And I was explaining how the pattern to X was going to be W, X, Y, yeah. And the, we were waiting for this X pattern to play out. I was discussing how, you know, it looks like it's going to take a while looking for a triangle just because Bitcoin generally likes its triangles. Um, but obviously that hasn't played out. And I think you've all noticed that, yeah. Um, so, first of all, this WXY, as it as it stands, has not failed, and I'm standing by it until it fails. Because that's in trading, that's what you should always do. Um, until your pattern breaks down, you should still have faith in it. Um, otherwise, you'll f often you see price reverse at the very extreme of a pattern. That's the most likely time that price will reverse. And it usually reverses very powerfully, so don't give up until the pri uh, the the pattern breaks down. So obviously the triangle's broken down, but that doesn't mean this X has has broken down. Yeah, there's other patterns, not just triangles. So we'll go into that very shortly, and I'll break it down very clearly for you. All right. So um, <clears throat> lots of drama yesterday, lots of negative news. Pretty much every negative thing you could say about Bitcoin all came out at the same time around here yeah pretty much anything negative you could think about bitcoin was all released at the same time yeah so typical examination uh, typical example of market manipulation right there yeah i've made a previous video on market manipulation in bitcoin if you check it out i think it was about three days ago now the the thumbnail actually says bitcoin market manipulation um, and that was referring to what happened in 2014 with Mt. Gox. Um, <clears throat> it seems like the agenda at that time was different to this time in that. I'll explain it in a moment. But uh, yeah, I feel like at present, I feel like there was a different agenda. So um, yeah, lots of negative press. So what did we have? We had um, Binance hack. Um, Matt, a lot of hype about that, despite the fact that it wasn't quite as significant as it was initially made out to be. But yeah, it was a hack and certainly scares people off. Uh, what else was there? So the guy who benefited from Mt. Gox um, has been selling uh, since since the high at twenty thousand dollars. Well, well, obviously, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, of course, he's been selling. Um, <clears throat> so. And but they made out that he's just sold it. Some news articles were saying, "Oh, he just sold it yesterday," and all this um, utter nonsense. He's been selling from the high. Um, and um, what else was there? Oh yeah, apparently in Iceland, some of the Bitcoin mining servers have uh, been stolen. Yeah, actually, that's been happening. Um, that happened quite a few days ago, but they thought they'd re-release the story to make it look like it had just happened. So. All that news came out at one moment here. You saw this big bearish candle, bring it right down. Um, created lots of liquidity in the marking, market, lots of panic selling. And to be honest, a candle like that, I would have expected price to come down further. There was obviously a lot of buying coming in. And when there's panic on all that negative news, there's usually only one typical buyer and that's people who know where price is going. So. At the moment, there's still good argument to be bullish. So I'm going to break it down why this corrective pattern still holds. So let's zoom in. Let's go on the hourly chart. 
All right, first of all, I'm going to label it and then I'm going to break it down. So obviously the triangle is gone. So let's just delete this line. Yeah, you can see that broke out. Yeah, that didn't hold. As I said in my video yesterday, let's let this corrected pattern finish. Yeah, don't try and trade it. Yeah, because there's uh, so many different corrected patterns that can form. Uh, a triangle can very quickly turn into a, a zigzag. It can turn into a regular flat. There's a, a lot of different corrected patterns. Yeah. Now, I'm going to label this the way I see it. So, still, this is our W, and X is our corrected pattern. Now, the way I see it is it, it's pretty much a, a regular flat. So, a regular flat we call ABC. A, B, C. Now, flats, the, the sub wave count for a flat is three uh, waves making up the A wave, three waves making up the B wave, and the C wave is usually the most impulsive. It's actually made of five legs. Yeah? So that's, I've actually count, looked at the count, and definitely I can see three waves here, three waves here, and five waves here might not be so obvious to you, so let me, let's break it down. Um, so first of all, as I mentioned in previous videos, this is seven legs down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. When you see seven legs down, always think double zigzag. And a zigzag is basically an ABC pattern. So let's draw the two zigzags, A, B, C. And then they're connected by X, and then you draw your second A, B, C. Yeah? So that's your three legs down. That's one, two, three. Yeah? So there's your, that's the A wave, three legs. And uh, the next leg, um, the next leg is also three legs. We discussed this yesterday. Uh, I gave tribute to uh, Mahmoud and AP, both pointing out the uh, very impressive uh, three legs up here. So uh, let's label that ABC as well. So A will be one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And then you get an expanded flat going A, B, C. And then the final leg is a diagonal. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Here the waves are overlapping, and when they overlap, we call it a diagonal. So these are your three waves up. Now this is more complex. The five legs down. Yeah. This requires a, a good eye to to count this one. Um, so let's zoom in on this. Uh, to be honest, I think the fifteen-minute chart is needed for this one. Let's uh, just expand it a little bit. All right, so this is my count. So it's going to be made of five waves down. So wave one is made of five waves in itself. So one, two, three, four, five. Now wave two, I make it to be a running flat. So that's the A, B, C. Two finishes there. Now wave three, I've got as one, two, three, four, five. Three finishes there. Four was an A, B, C. And wave five finished here. Yeah, that's the, the, the five waves. Now, obviously, I always use Fibonacci to confirm my waves, so Starting from the beginning here, wave one, I'm saying wave one finished here, and wave three started here. Look at where wave three came to, 1.618, yeah? Perfect, it, it, it validates the count, yeah? This is why you have to use Fibonacci to confirm your Elliott wave pattern. Now, very typically, um, wave five is equal to wave one. So if we put the beginning this is still the, the wave one extension, yeah? We plot it from there, the beginning of wave one to the end of wave one. If we drag that down to the start of wave four, okay, 
So here it looks like a 1.382 extension of wave one, which is still, you know, it's still uh, a fib level. So yeah, I would have preferred it if it was a one to one ratio, but 1.382, I'm still happy with, to be honest. And I'm very happy with the, the wave three extension. Wave five is often a little bit hit and miss. It's very hard to judge. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I'm calling this the bottom, would I, do I suggest, you know, building up a position right now? What I would suggest, because there's so much volatility in the market right now, I would wait for some good four hourly candles to show a bullish pattern, yeah? We wanna see this uh, show good support at this level, yeah? Don't rush into the trade just yet. You know, if it, if it comes down any lower, uh, we have to completely change our count because this regular flat, if it fails, there's not many, I can't really think of another corrective pattern that would support this, yeah? At the moment, we're at the extremes of this regular flat. Um, so, yeah, that's the way I look at it. And with a regular flat, you expect A to be equal to C. So let's just have a look at those. Um, let's delete that. Let's compare A and C. So, a wave. There you go, one to one ratio. You can see it right there. That's why <clears throat> the price stopped at that point. Obviously slightly overshot because of that's uh, all the hype that's attached with the move. But there it is, the one to one ratio. So just labeling it now. A, B, C. Yeah, now there's not much time to see whether this move is gonna work or not. If it comes down lower, as I say, we have to make a new recount. At the moment, I'm standing by this pattern, yeah, but price needs to start moving soon. It really does. Um, the other good thing about this playing out, um, let's go on the two, uh, four hourly chart again. I previously discussed about this being a, uh, an inverse head and shoulders, so let's draw it. With left shoulder, head, right shoulder, which looks like it's gonna finish here now, before it breaks out, okay? Now before, with it finishing here, there was a good argument really that it wasn't a true inverse head and shoulders because with an inverse head and shoulders you get maximum volume where the head is and then the shoulders typically have high volume also but not as high as the head yeah now the left shoulder obviously had loads of volume but this low wasn't really associated with similar volume now when you look at it you can see the high volume on the right shoulder so if this does break certainly have to take into account this pattern and as I say to calculate the projection from the breakout we're looking at a move from the, the head perpendicularly up and then we project that from the breakout point as I say that's why I got something around this figure yeah yeah but let's not uh, look too far ahead right now first we want to see some good support at this level we want to see some bullish four hourly candles um, that's what we're waiting for we want to see more volume come in i want to see this volume mounting up it's coming in it's coming in it's looking good i want to see it mount up and then i want to see price move so it can't hang around low for too long yeah because the longer it hangs around a bullet if this is so bullish it won't hang around here too long um, if you're a high risk trader Put a position on below the low here, and yeah, if you want, um, that's more of a high risk to me. Um, as I say, I would wait for some four hourly candles. Yes, you don't want to miss out on a move, but at the same time, don't worry, this line's not going to break straight away. Yeah, you've got time. It's not good. You don't have to worry about blinking and it dis you know price suddenly shooting above it. So, um, as I say, this is what I'm looking at. Um, 
if price breaks down further than here, then we have to make a complete recount. Yeah. So yeah, that, that pretty much sums up what I wanted to explain today. Um, lots of drama in the market, loads of drama with this, uh, all this news coming out. It all came out at the same time. What are the odds? You know, you know, what are the odds of that? Obviously someone's, I've mentioned it before in my market manipulation video, the smart money controls the media and they dish that media out at a time that suits them. Now, the fact that the media came out here tells me that I think they wanted to bring price down, but not too far. With the Mount Gox, I mentioned how they made wave four overlap wave one. And that invalidated a bullish move and then hence price came down by itself. You know, everyone started, uh, became very bearish. For the bulls that are out there, this would be the count with a one, A, B, C, two, three, and this is your wave four, yeah? And then you've got five, which will break out. And then you get a retest before going up. All right, now, with Mount Gox, what happened? It waited for price to get here. Then the negative news was released. And then wave four overlap wave one. Yeah, that's what happened. The fact that the news wasn't released at this point makes you wonder, you know, the, when they release this news, they, they do it so that they require the minimum effort to push price below uh, to make wave four cross wave one and invalidate the bullish move. Because as soon as four crosses one, you can't call this one, two, three anymore. You have to call it A, B, C, yeah? This is the difference between an impulse and a correction, yeah? What happens with this, yeah? As soon as it crosses wave one, you have to label this A, B, C and not one, two, three. As long as it's up here, you can call it one, two, three, and this is four. As soon as it comes down here, you've got to change all your all your notations. It becomes ABC, and it's a correction pattern, and the impulse is going down, 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 further below this. Yeah. As it stands, we're we're actually producing a bit of a wick here, which is very nice to see. Yeah, on good volume, volume coming in, nice wick forming. This is what I want to see. Yeah. Um, whether it's you know, just a correction pattern, hard to say, but the more volume comes in, the better, because usually corrections have low volume, yeah? So if it's going up on low volume, that's more suggestive of a correction, which means it will come back down. But if it's going up on high volume, that's suggestive of a change in trend, yeah? It needs to have high volume here because, you know, this is the last low, essentially, before we get to here. So there's gotta be high volume. Uh, there's been good volume so far, so yeah. At the moment, we're at a very pivotal point. We just have to sit and wait, see how things pan out. All right, let's take that down. Uh, if we just go in the hourly, I just want to show you we do have some good RSI divergence. I, I do like the RSI indicator. I don't like using too many indicators because that can ruin a chart. The more indicators you have, the more buy and sell signals you have and you can have way too many and you will never become profitable if you have too many buy and sell signals. Um, so limit your indicators to your favorite indicators. I've chosen mine. Uh, I know other people use theirs. I'm not gonna write them off. You know, if they're making money, they're making money. But um, uh, the indicators I prefer, Elliott Wave, Fibs, uh, RSI Divergence, Candlesticks, Volume. These are the main things I'm looking at as well as understanding of market manipulation um, <clears throat> and how the media plays a big role um, right so yeah uh, RSI so if we have a look at that here you can see RSI going up whilst price is coming down so you can see the RSI coming up here so definite divergence yeah but the RSI since price has come down from here, RSI has been going up. So definitely we drew a big shift up. Yeah. Whether it's corrective or whether it's going to be a new reversal, time will tell. Yeah. If you want to get in now, that's up to you. 
But as I say, um, it's the safest thing to do would be to wait for some four hourly candles to develop. You know, once what price goes up, it, oh, the good thing about Elliott wave is it goes up in five waves and then it retraces three waves. So once you see five waves up, don't worry, you've not missed the move. Don't get, don't start fearing that you're missing out on the move. Wait for the three wave retracement and then get in. That's a good time to get in. As soon as you see five waves up, that's a very reassuring sign. But yeah, you have to wait for that. All right, so I hope that explains my uh, my analysis so far. Uh, yeah, keep your eyes on this, guys. You know, things are going to happen quite soon. As I say, if this breaks down, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new count. So far, I'm not changing the count just because the correction hasn't finished. As I say, until the correction comes to an extreme, we shouldn't get in. Yeah, it's at an extreme now. Now we just need to see. RSI divergence is one thing I look for, so that's a, a big thumbs up. But another thing I look for is bullish candlesticks. And I don't mean bullish candlesticks on a 15 minute chart or a five minute chart. I'm talking four hourly chart. Yeah, even daily chart is something I look at. Yeah, sometimes four hourly isn't sufficient for me. If I'm still having doubts, I wait for the daily chart to give confirmation. Um, so don't be patient, guys. Um, but keep an eye on this. Yeah. Uh, I'll try and give regular updates. Um, unfortunately, I have a, a day job as well, so um, a the updates might not be as frequent as you like, but uh, I'm doing these updates as fast as I can. So, uh, yeah, I hope it's been useful. And, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that for, for now, guys. But uh, if you like what I've uh, mentioned, if you want to see a perfect example of market manipulation, then check out my video from a few days ago where I discussed Mt. Gox. Uh, the thumbnail to the video was Bitcoin market manipulation. So check that out if you want to learn a little bit more about manipulation. Um, otherwise, yeah, please like, subscribe and share. All right, take care.